Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna debunk a few problems, a, a few things people are saying about the airbox system on these bikes. These airbox um, air systems, air filter design on this bike, it is very restrictive. Uh, what we've come up with is we've come up with a manometer test with this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna test the restrictions through a standard airbox, all the different configurations of a standard airbox, and also a fully modified airbox with a CB300 intake. Um, it's going to have several different types of air filter systems. A lot of people think by modifying this system to a CB300, you're going to lose bottom end, you're going to lose mid range. I disagree. See, that is all in the tuning. We're trying to get mid to top end. Being a small ball bike, it's gonna be beneficial to get that mid range to top end power because basically we're always in the mid range and top end power on this bike. A lot of people, a lot of people aren't aware that it's got a barometric sensor in the throttle body here. It's on the intake side, so the air filter side of the intake throttle body. So any restrictions on this air box, any, um, slow down in velocity, the computer picks this up and it reduces the fuel load in because it's got a, a, a less air load going in. So overall, if we can get a better flow of the air filter, a, a better system, and then match it to a good tune, um, I'm matching this one with CBR cams in this, then we should be able to pick up a substantial increase in power and the way it actually runs down the bottom end as well shouldn't be greatly affected. So what I'm gonna show you now is the system that I'm gonna to use to test, and you'll see it when I do. If it is something that needs um, addressing, it'll show up in the test. If it doesn't need addressing, I've done all this for nothing. Let's see what happens. So what we have here, it's a very, very basic setup. So what we've got here, we have the Muppet manometer. Basically we have up on this scale here, we have increments of 20, 40, 60, and 80 mil. So we can accurate, accurately check the, the actual vacuum on the inside of the intake. What I've actually done here was I've come up with a little bung that replaces the resonator. Um, the resonator is only for low end pulsing to take intake noise out of the bike basically. So this is gonna be left off once we do the uh, full modification, but for, for this purpose, we've just tapped into this. So this is where it goes onto the actual um, throttle body. So any restriction from this point all the way up to the intake, which is here, this is gonna pick it up. This is gonna pick up exactly where it enters the actual intake. So we're testing this whole system front to back. What I'm using as my variable air so I'm, I'm using just a small blower as a as basically the engine so i'm mimicking low medium and high speeds this is going to be pulling at high speed a lot more um, air than what the actual bike is pulling but basically we're, we're we're mimicking exactly what the engine would be so we're pulling through this area here so any any vacuum or any difference in the intake pressure that we see here is greatly going to, it's going to be seen by the actual computer and reduce the actual power input on the bike because of the reduced air intake. So what we have here is we have a brand new standard intake, brand new Honda filter. This has not been modified. The only thing that's been done is the intake's been taken out. It's this is everyone does this. So this is this is ridiculous. So what we're going to do first up is we're gonna run it through testing on, with the basic um, standard filter setup. We've blocked off our two air filter intakes here. One's for the pair system, one's for the um, crankcase pressure. That's all done. And we're gonna use our very basic system here, but trust me, this is the most accurate way to test this system. Okay, here you go. So, Airbox cover back on, basically standard airbox. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run low speed. 
we're gonna write all these down so we can jot a graph later. So first of all, we've got a good seal on the intake, low speed. And there we have 30 millimeters of water right there. We'll go to second speed, standard airbox. There we have 35. So we're, we're actually pulling a vacuum on here because of the restriction on the airbox. And we're, we're going up on our gauge here. So we're seeing exactly how much of a vacuum this is pulling. Now we'll go to full speed. So this is mimicking high-end RPM. So that just went up to 70 millimeters of water right there. Airbox cover comes off. So this is just standard air filter, brand new intake. So we'll go back through, low speed again. So that's 22 millimeters of water on low speed. On medium speed. That's just on 30 on low speed. So we've had a drop in five millimeters of water um, on, on medium speed just by taking this door off. So we'll go to high speed. And that's 50. So we've gone from 70 with the door on now to 50 with the door off. So now we're going to go back. We're going to take the air filter out. Brand new. Now we're just, what we're testing now is the restriction on this long intake runner. We've got a door open here. We've got a smaller opening here and a larger exit here. So I'm tipping we're gonna get a restriction with this as well. So we'll have a look, low speed. So that's about 18, so it's just under 20. So straight away we have less of a restriction without the air filter in, but there still is a restriction there. So we'll go to level two, medium. Okay, that's 22 on medium. So we've gone from 35 with the filter and the door on to 30 without the door on, and now we're at 22 without the air filter in it. So now we'll try flat out. Forty-five. So, on high speed, without the air filter, we went from 70 to start with, we went to 50 with the door off, so we dropped a fair bit there, and then we dropped another 5 to 45 without the air filter in it. So we're at 45 on high. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and modify this intake, we're going to put the CB um, 300 intake on here which is this one it needs a fair bit of modification so I'll film what I do there um, there's some material in this airbox that was going to cause turbulence so that's going to be taken out and then we're going to run a different air filter and a different air intake system so we'll go ahead and do that and we'll see what comes about we got this unstuck. It's just held in by a bit of glue. It's quite simple just to press and pull it out. So this is the intake, how big it is inside the actual airbox. As you can see here, it's, uh, it's quite a small intake um, compared to the intake on the CBR of a CB300. It's a lot smaller. So this one is probably good for really low bottom end uh, this one's going to be better for mid all the way through the top. So our goal now is to fit this into here. This is a 64 mil socket, 63.5 I think it is. So roughly if anything around a 63 millimeter is the size of the hole that we're going to use. So we'll just heat this up. Alright, let's see if that'll go through. We want it nice and center. Let's 
sperm pressure. A little bit of turning. Just about a way through. That's it. What we have here is a four inch flexible joint that flares into a five inch. And this is what I'm gonna run on the intake with my pod style filter. Now in the end here, we've got our CB300 uh, fitting in here. There had to be, there was a little bit of modifications to get this in. You've got this little little bit of uh, rubber that sticks up here that's your very very top to get the angle of this in exactly the right alignment but on the bottom here we had to trim it out and this had to be flexed out about 8 to 10 mil to get the angle on here um, I've just used a Sally's epoxy super glue two part and this took 12 hours to bond so I've bonded all that in uh, and that's all ready to go. The, the actual structure of it is very solid, so there's going to be no movement whatsoever. And that's our intake. What I also used to put this hole through here was this little collar. And this actually goes in as reinforcing for when we put our outside air filter on. Okay, now we have the full setup of the air filter. Consists of the uni filter intake. Also have the Hurricane stainless steel air filter. So this is what we're gonna test now. And I'm hoping this will flow a lot better than the last one. So that's all, uni filter, the actual Hurricane stainless air filter, modified internals with the CB300 uh, intake boot. So let's see what this does. Okay, full, full airflow. So come down to just on 25 millimeters of water on high. So now we put it down to medium. And that's just on 10. So just right in the middle there. And low is seven. So we get seven, 10, and 25 on high for that setup. Now just as a reference, I'm going to install the standard air filter with the uni filter uh, intake, the large intake. So that's in there, door back on. So we'll start on low. So that's just on 11 for that one. So we'll go to medium. That's 15. We go to high. That's just over 30. That was about 32. So it's a lot more restrictive with the standard air filter than the actual hurricane air filter. Disregarding micron filtering. So that's the difference in the two filters. 
This uses the Japanese stainless, me stainless mesh and that's your standard uh, Honda filter. So now we'll do some more testing. So this is going to be interesting. Um, we're going to remove the pre-filter and see what we get with the different filters as well. So this test is hurricane filter on the inside. No pre-filter, it's removed with the CV intake on high. So that's 25. So basically we have exactly the same. So this pre-filter is actually not inducing any restriction whatsoever because of the size and F, the surface area. So, so far, the tests are looking really good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mimic the standard air tube with the air filter restriction into here. So a lot of, uh, uh, there's a new unifilter kit out that puts a single boot inside this so I'm gonna put this restrictor back in and tape up the intake just to mimic the standard uh, intake. And then I'm gonna stuff the air filter inside very similar to the way their sock sits in there and see what restriction that actually comes up with. We have no air filter. We still have the CV high, high flow intake on the boot. What we've done here is I've installed the Unifilter sock on the standard intake and stuffed a little bit down in there just to, to mimic exactly what the new Unifilter sock, pre-filter pre sock does. I've taped up my intake and put this back in there. So it's all free on the inside there. The only thing I've done is added the stock intake, single, so there's one, and the actual Unifilter um, foam that they use on the little stuff sock that they go in there. So what we're gonna check now is how much restriction putting this in the airbox actually makes in real life. So first of all, we're gonna do it on low. Wow, that's over 50 millimeters of water um, on low with, the, with the, the, the stuff sock in there. We'll go to medium speed. That's a hundred millimeters of water on low. I'm not even gonna try it on high because it'll suck the fluid out. So what we're doing is you guys out there putting these filter socks inside here, you are suffocating your motor. Basically, it is restricting that much airflow. And this sock, you like this sock's just sitting in there. There's only a little bit of filter material sitting in there. It's not doing anything. Wood. We'll just put one layer over the filter here so there's no, absolutely nothing stuffed down in there. We'll see what that does. We'll do it on low. Still the same. So that's a 40. Medium. So not even stuffing it into the boot, just running one layer on a brand new Unifilter sock. It's pulling more restriction than the standard air filter and everything in the standard setup. So you guys doing that, as soon as you get a little bit of dirt on that pre-filter, you're suffocating your engine. You're, you're robbing yourself of horsepower. So this is no air filter, CV300 intake, with the snorkel, standard snorkel installed with no air filter, with no filter on it. That's at 45. So 45 millimeters of water. The snorkel is the restriction, guys. The snorkel is what's causing all the issue. Um, get rid of it. These are the results. The results are the 100 mil Unifilter intake is a winner. It added no restriction with the four inch intake. It added no restriction to the actual flow test. The actual biggest flow result 
was taking out the standard CRF 300 intake boot and putting the CB 300 intake boot on. It's a modification, but it is well worth doing it. The difference is huge. Um, another thing was, was quite impressive. The standard air filter is not as restrictive as I first thought. And lastly, the Hurricane stainless um, filter is no restriction, hardly any restriction whatsoever. So this is going to be, as, as much as people don't like it, this is going to be the highest flow air filter you'll buy. Um, we come to the conclusion that the stock intake snorkel is ridiculously uh, restricted. So with the standard air box, everything in place standard, standard air filter, standard snorkel, we had 20 millimeters of water on low, 35 on medium, and 70 on high, which is huge. Um, if we remove the, the, the filter door, so we took this off, take the snorkel out of the equation, we had 20 on low, which is similar, 30 on medium, medium, which is five millimeters better, and then 50 on high, which is 20 millimeters better. So it just goes to show that the snorkel was the big restriction there. And then we took the air filter out. So we got 20 on low, 22 on medium, and 45 on high. So 45 on high is basically just the restriction in this boot. Then we went to the modified airbox design. So my full modified airbox had the four inch intake. It had the uni filter over the four inch intake as a pre-filter and it had the hurricane filter as the air filter inside and it also had the CB300 modification in the actual top here. It also had the plastic diffuser inside the airbox removed. The full modified setup on high was 25 so it was less restrictive with all of that set up, then it was without even no air filter in it. So just not even the boot. So huge, half. Um, I removed the pre-filter, I still got 25. So it means that this was restricting zero. There was no change with this on there. Um, and then the no filter went to 22 millimeters of water, which means it was only three millimeters of water difference with the hurricane filter instead of, what was it? Uh, it was 32 with the standard. So it was another 10 millimeters of water more restrictive just by that air filter instead of running that one. So that's very cool. Um, and then just to sum it up, we put the uni filter, we stuffed it in the intake just to mimic the pre-filter that's on the market now. And the numbers went ridiculous, even with no, no air filter in it and, this, and the bigger intake, so it's just the actual snorkel. It went to 50 on low and 100 on medium. I couldn't even put it on high because my gauge doesn't go that high. So, hey guys, if you're putting all that stuff in your airbox, your bike's going to go slower, basically. That's how it is. I hope you enjoyed all this. Um, I've done all this on my own accord. I hope you like it, but it just goes to show that the biggest restriction is the snorkel, and the second biggest restriction is the CB intake. Guys, do the mod, it is well worth it. Thanks for watching.